Hi everyone, Bernard here with another citizen vlog. It's another citizen vlog past and a, a moments in time. And today, if you look at what's well, a good head of hair, isn't it? I mean, I, I used to have hair like, well, nearly like that anyway at one time. Yeah, today's moment in time, we're looking at Mr. Jim Tolmy. Jim Tolmy. How long did he spend with City? Do you know? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. It's not a quiz question. It's not a quiz this. We've got to have a look at Jim Tolmy moments in time. Please, if you're new to the Citizen channel, please push that old subscribe button. Push those bell notifications. Make sure your notifications are sent to public. So you get to know when these little vlogs and City specials are coming out. Yes, Jim Tolmy. And the moments in time. Uh, significantly out of 25th of June 1986 when he actually left City to join a Swedish team called Mark Mark Oyd IF something I don't know if it's pronounced correctly I've probably not correct, uh, pronounced that correctly but he left City 25th of June 1986 after originally signing for 30,000 for City uh, by a Mr Billy McNeil on the 22nd of July 1983 those dates are more or less right. I mean, sometimes with these dates on transfers and sackings and resignations and purchases and not always spot on, but they're the closest dates we've got going back in history. And the other significant date, obviously, was the 21st of November 1960. Uh, so he's a year younger, just over a year younger than me, about um, uh, 16 months younger than me, Mr. Jim told me. I don't not seen a, an image, re a recent image of Jim, but um, I'm sure his hair's not like that anymore. But uh, there you go. Yeah, so we're going to have a look at... Uh, it was an interesting sign, it wasn't it? 22nd, don't forget, this was the season after... Uh, whew, well, this is the season after the, the debacle, wasn't it? The, the loss against Luton and the, the actual disaster of going down, um, losing that game against Luton Town, which... Uh, you know, it was has been covered many times. I think I've covered it myself in different things, and I've got some great um, <coughs> paid newspaper coverage actually that I've not actually picked on yet. But we'll uh, we'll no doubt look at that in the future moments in time for City. We've got some great from the old newspapers as well, clippings etc. And the not the full newspapers, but the sports sections as well, and with a bit of look, with the news from the front pages as well. So it's quite good to look back at them sort of things, isn't it? So, but we'll look at that another day anyway. So yes, Mr. Jim told me. Uh, so yeah, with him come on twenty second of uh, July eighty three, his first his first game, obviously. Interestingly enough, even though he was he was penciled in to be one of the first teamers, our first game was against uh, Crystal Palace away, which we actually won two 0 and he actually was actually the star city star man that day. Let me just move that down, move that up a little bit there. Yeah, he was actually the star man against Crystal Palace away, that's, that's the programme there. But interestingly enough, if you look at the team um, on the back there, I mean, it was uh, Williams, Ransom, Wilson, Bond, Power, Reed, Baker, McNabb, Parlene, Hartford and Kinsey. He actually wasn't on the team there, so interestingly enough. Even though he was penciled in to be a, a regular, he did play the game. And he was our star man. He didn't score, but he was the star man in that opening game. Uh, it's a, a good 2 0 win against Crystal Palace. I mean, Crystal Palace were hoping to do good things as well, having a look through there. And then his next game, we had two away games unusually. You don't usually get two away games on the trot, do you? But the next game was also um, it was the Bank Holiday. Bank Holiday weekend, I think. Uh, so that was 27th of August. So a couple of days later, 29th of August, we played Cardiff City away. And it was his first goal. He actually scored his first goal in that game against Cardiff City. Uh, unfortunately, we did lose, so he did score our losing goal. But again, at least, at least he got onto the uh, to the squad there, the uh, the team squad. Uh, Jim Tom, which is uh, was unusual. He wasn't on the Palace one. I wasn't quite sure why that had happened. Which obviously brought him to his first home game, doesn't it? And this obviously there's a lot of celebrate. Obviously, Billy McNeil knew Jimmy Jimmy Frizzell partnership. I think Saab had just took on City as well at the time. So again, we were we were we were up for it. We 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 had the down of the season before, but obviously, uh, there's a nice feature of the new blues, and obviously it's Jim Tolmy plus uh, Neil McNabb and uh, Derek Parlane there. But obviously, that's the image of uh, uh, Billy McNeil with Jim Tolmy, the uh, main stand in the background, plat bit of the plat lane there, and just just comments said by. Uh, 
by uh, Billy McNeil's view there on, on the sign of Jim Tolmy. Potentially has the ability to be a good goal scorer. He's a very calm finisher. If he gets a chance, he's cool and clinical, takes his time in putting it away. He's a quick little laddie with an abundance of courage. Good control and pace have always made him stand out, and this threat comes from the fact he's quick control. He favours the right side. I recall there was an interest from Aberdeen and Dundee United at the time he left Morton, and they would have paid more than the price he cost Lochran. There was also some English clubs nibbling for his services. There was great furore over his departure abroad. He got the move because of the change in EEC restrictions. So, yeah. Uh, born Glasgow, 9th November the 21st, 1960. As we've already said, clubs at this stage was Morton, who made his de senior debut in 1978. Lockerham sold to Belgium Club 78 for the 81-82 season. So that's little views on Mr Jim Tolman. And again, in the Barnsley game... <sighs> He scored two goals. I mean, he got off to a cracking start. I mean, a little bit more on that in a minute, but he got off to a superb start. And there's a great image of him on the back there with uh, Neil McNabb. And uh, obviously, we're getting the, Scot the Scottish feel out with the Tartan trio. But obviously, his hair doesn't look as mad there, does it? As it does in that picture. But that Saab, obviously, Phillips came after, didn't it? So uh, that's a little bit later. When his, his hair, he must have been like us. He must have been on lockdown. He must have been able to go out and get his hair cut. But uh, that's a great image isn't it, of the three players. Corner of the Kipax in there. I mean, I've stood in that corner, I've stood all over the Kipax, and there's the uh, North Stand. Obviously, I've sat in there many times as well. So, I mean, it's great to look back at those images and just look at the back of the stand. So, yeah, he scored two in a 3 2 win over Barnsley. So, things are really good, weren't they? I mean, he actually, the next home game he played was against Fulham, and I think he's, he's actually featured on the front cover there in action against Barnsley. Uh, and yeah, it was obviously we get to actually see the goal he scored against Bars, which was from, from a free kick. Uh, you can see the image of him there. S swerved it obviously round the wall, so it was a good little free kick taker. And it, did be, it was our penalty taker as well that season. So it's a crafty free kick apparently, just reading from the programme, uh, which caused such a buzz among, among the 25,000 fans at Main Road. Uh, number 11 outwitted the Barnsley defence wall and Fox goalkeeper Bobby Horn to slip City into a 23rd minute lead. While most fans have been expecting Tom, Tommy Caton was playing then, number six to unleash a typical blockbuster, upset the Terrier Tommy to curl in his debut goal at home. So that's absolutely, there's another image of him there in action in that Barnsley game that we won 3 2. There's a little piece on him. Obviously, Jim's fixed it. See there, Jim's fixed it. A little, a little nod to a certain program which we don't really talk about now, Jimmy Savile. But uh, it goes on to say in the program notes: bashfully quiet, Jim Tommy picked up a bottle of champagne and an armful of sweaters from match sponsors Umbro for last Saturday's sparkling performance and made him at least for the moment, which was well, that was quite quite a fortuitous word to to mention. At least for the moment. The new king of the Kipat Squire. Two accomplished goals, moments of torment inflicted on the opposing Barnsley defence, and a will to work style made the five foot six inch forward the flavour of the day ahead of other stars. So, and there's also an image there on the back of him getting his little awards there for his man of the match. So he gets some shirt, his Umbro shirts there, obviously, his, uh, was it Umbro? Yeah, his Umbro sportswear stuff. So I mean, probably grateful for that in those days. Well, I don't think we were over generally. So he got, so he got the uh, man of the match award. But the Fulham game was a was a damp squib. That was that was a nil nil. So that was a little bit disappointing. And as I said, he was a penalty taker. So when he came to playing Portsmouth uh, on September the tenth, nineteen eighty three, he added another. String to his bow and scored again back from a penalty, so he became our little our penalty taker as well. So it was a great start, wasn't it? Great start. By the first week in December, uh, he'd scored 11 goals in 20 competitive games. And obviously that followed from seven goals in his first nine games. So he had deteriorated a little bit. Uh, but sadly, it did sort of peter out a little bit after that not not much on the goal front etc etc and it's interesting i pick up the like the story of jim tolmy on these reflections this is the saturday this is the last home game saturday the 12th of may 1984 against cambridge united and obviously it's it's asking for the players for their reflections and it probably interest it makes an interesting read uh jim tolmy says it was curious that i started the season by scoring quite a few goals i don't look on myself as a goal scorer 
<laughs> I've never had much of a record in this respect. My previous best was 11 for a full season. So it was a pleasant surprise to find that everything I was hitting was going in the net during the opening months. The team were making a lot of chances in that spell too and that helped a lot. My best display was in the 3-2 win over Barnes, which you just looked at. When I scored twice, I got off to such a good start, it was a pity I couldn't maintain it. A little bit more on that later as well from um, obviously the manager's opinion and it was a little bit behind the scenes with Mr Jim told me that we didn't quite see I might have even been better had the goals not flowed so readily and people might not have expected quite so much in the later months but once I'd made a bit of a name for Matt, for cracking them in it became expected from me yeah because he never quite lived up to that start up to Christmas time he never quite got going um, obviously by 1984-85 um Obviously, he wasn't fancied, was he? Because out of the first first eleven games uh, for City, he was actually a substitute for nine. He was actually sub the substitute for nine, but and he just had one start in those first eleven games, uh, which was um, a game. Um, sorry, one one start, and obviously a game against Blackpool, where he came on a sub. Um, on the 9th of October 1984, he actually scored two goals uh, in that game. So even though he'd been sub, he had, he had come on a sub before. But uh, again, you could see potential there. That was the um, 9th of October against Blackpool. He come on a sub and scored two goals. But unfortunately, he picked up an injury. Um, not during the game. I think it was a couple of days after whilst he was training. So he had these sort of niggling injuries all season. Um, so he picked up. Lots of injuries. So if you come to the end of the 1984-85 season, not much to talk about on the football front with Jim Tolmey. But again, he's got his reflections on the season. Jim Tolmey. This is from the um, 11th of May 80. That's a great. That's a great image. The fans love that program. I do like the, the program. So by this, this is City versus Charlton, Saturday, 11th of May 1985. And he was reflections on the season. Jim Tolmey. It's definitely been a bad season for me. The worst of my career so far. I was on the point of coming back to my form last October when I injured knee ligaments. So that was after the Blackpool game. Blackpool game just talked about. I was out for about three months. I'd come on the second half sub at Blackpool in the Milk Cup. Yeah, it was a Milk Cup game. Scored two of our goals. I thought it was me back to stay. All my confidence returned with the match. But 48 hours in later in training, I wrecked my knee. And after spending the first two months as substitute, uh, now I'm out of the tea with a duodenal ulcer, which is inflamed. So that was Christmas time. So he's poorly again. He had a few little little problems, um, perhaps a little bit psychological as well, but uh, a little bit more on that later. Uh, I was very sick of, on the coach returning to Manchester and was quickly diagnosed as a peptic ulcer. It flares up occasionally, but it was worse last week. And as I woke up at six o'clock on the Friday morning, was sick and progressively got worse. The ulcers proved inconvenient now and again, but it was dreadful then. I was taken into hospital. I've been doing a lot of painting in the house, and it's a theory that the fumes may have affected me. But I'm sure I can get into training and have myself fit for the last game against Charlton. I don't think he played the last game against Charlton. Best personal performance against Leeds United, April the 8th, when I came on a sub. Yeah, he sort of started to appear again towards the end of the season. Um... And I, uh, he came on a sub for Graham Baker and played central midfield for the first time in my career. I enjoyed that a lot. So, yeah, as I say, through injury and very ni niggly things, he didn't play much at all that season again. I mean, if you look at his performances at the end, I mean, he's actually stayed at City all three seasons, but you'll see his stats at the end are not very impressive. So, yeah, he did make three or four appearances, but started. So, obviously, he must have he must have fancied Billy McNeil must have fancied him a little bit again towards the end of the season because he gave him that chance. 1985-86, which was going to be his last season at City, was even more disappointing. He had two early sub appearances, but um, just he just uh, his only starting appearance was a, a one nil loss against Oxford United on the 28th of September 1985, and he ended up playing this season. He ended up playing uh, this is 85-86. He ended up playing 19 reserve games. He did score nine goals in 19 reserve games, but again. Billy McNeil, even though he'd put him in at the end of the season before, I think Billy McNeil, when he when he chats and when you look at his program notes, just sort of a lot of injuries and a lot of problems, and obviously he told me told me at the end of the season, I think he was coming in because there were injuries in the same way that told me he was getting injured, not getting a really good run for his money, but uh, obviously he did do nineteen reserve games, 
so this before the end of 86 on the 27th of march this accumulated in this this meant he, he went actually on loan he went on loan to carlisle so even though mr mcneil used to whinge about injuries he was quite happy to send him on loan to carlisle and he went to carlisle on the 27th of march 1986 and stayed to the end of the season and obviously as we know he didn't he didn't actually come back it's quite interesting because billy mcneil in the game against Arsenal on April the 5th, 1986. So towards the end of the season. It wasn't actually towards the end of the season. But on his programme notes, he has a little piece about Jim Tolman. And he goes on to say, He's gone on loan to Carl United for the final weeks of the season. Oh, what a waste of talent here. So it wasn't just about injuries, was it? Uh, the whole episode of his career at City has been a disappointing one. Well, apart from the start of his career, obviously. When the Scot came to the club, signed from Locker in the Belgium League Club, he was an instant hit. He gave everyone an illustration of his enormous talents, but I believe that his early success proved detrimental to his overall career. He allowed himself to be distracted. I think the talent became mass. So perhaps he got a little, little ahead of himself because he was doing so well. He lost sight of the basic truth in football. That you get out of the game what you were pre prepared to put into it. I mean, Billy McNeil didn't, didn't really take much uh, messing about, did he, with players? He was astonishing in the opening months of the 83-84 season, scoring regularly and started frequently. Starred frequently, sorry. He was a very exciting player, but he could not handle it. He's got to learn the football owes you nothing. You've got to work for what you get. It's significant that in all the time he's been off the team, first team scene at Main Road, only one club has come along and asked about his availability. Quite scathing from, uh, obviously, Billy McNeil nearly in this but obviously he knows obviously this this lad's on his way out and that club carlisle didn't appear until last week and now i have him for the next month here yeah, so it's only carlisle showing an interest in Jim Tommy, but towards the end of a season why why would clubs be looking unless you know looking anyway i cannot see a future for jim with city well there you go that says it all should he return at the end of the loan i think he's blown it such a shame because he's still a very talented footballer. So all was not well, was it? After that wonderful start, obviously him and Billy McNeil obviously rubbed, or oh, silly rubbed. You know, it's not it's not up to Billy McNeil to rub along, is it? He's the manager at the end of the day. What he says goes, but uh, it's quite significant, wasn't it? In that that comment there from that Arsenal program, his views, and very few managers are that forthright about players that are going out and is getting rid of. You know, not, they usually thank them and thank them for the service, etc., etc. But Mr McNeil and uh, this gentleman here, perhaps he was there, perhaps, perhaps he was jealous of his hair, but yeah, Billy McNeil had a good head of hair, didn't he, at the time? So, uh, yeah, that was that was an interesting thing with Jim Tolman there. Obviously, he didn't rub very well against Billy McNeil. So, his total league appearance, he had 46 in three seasons, he had 46 league appearances and 15 as substitute. And that scored 15 goals. So, overall, it doesn't sound bad, but do you think that most of those 15 goals were scored in the first three or four months of the. Uh, of his career at City it doesn't sound quite as good does it he just had one FA Cup appearance he didn't score and he had uh, three League Cup appearances and a couple of substitutes and scored four goals so again in the League Cup which is obviously two of those goals were in the Milk Cup against um, Blackpool weren't they so overall 50 appearances and 17 as substitute and 19 goals so if you look at the stats like that it wasn't too bad was it but uh, as I said most of those 19 goals you know, half of them came came in the first uh, first few games, obviously. So, was it what was the stat? Eleven goals in twenty games. So eleven eleven out of those nineteen get goals came in the first twenty games he played. So the other twenty six he only added eight, which isn't a bad it's not a bad return, is it? It's not a total disaster. And he did say himself he's not he's not known for his goal scoring, but he was brought as a forward. So perhaps. Uh, Billy McNeil expected different things from him. I mean, he knew him before, didn't he? So perhaps he expected things from him that uh, Jim Tolmey couldn't do. Was an interesting? I thought that was. I thought that was quite interesting. I didn't really know much about Jim Tolmey apart from watching him. I did watch most of his games. Uh, um, some some ways, but not too many ways. I don't think in that period. Um, well, that was that was quite an interesting thing to do. Yeah. So that was Jim Tolmey. Uh, moments in time. Let me know what your comments are. Uh, he left City on the 25th of June 1986 to uh, go to Swedish football after signing initially for 30,000 on the 22nd of July 83. And he'll celebrate his birthday on the 21st of November. So, And he's nearly as old as me, not quite. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Please uh, let me know in the comments below with your many special memories you got of Jim Tolmey. I think I think that haircut says it all, doesn't it? Really, I mean that's but uh, I think that's a lot of people's favourite memory. He had quite a few little, little not quite as wild as that sometimes, but uh, some quite little nice haircuts. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. Please follow me on Twitter for all the latest uh, city news. And if you're into movies and TV dramas, I do stuff on that as well. So please check all the playlists and links below. And I'm on Twitter at Nostalgia underscore movie or at Charles Deneen. Deneen spelt D-I-N-N-N. So, and I follow everyone back. I do check every couple of days and follow people back if you want some followers as well. And I'm on Facebook and this helps obviously support this little these little vlogs I do. Obviously my little website moviegamenostalgia.com for old and rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s and some board games as well. So if you can spend some time to go on that, helps me have a little bit of cash so I can spend time doing these little vlogs and support, support, it supports the vlogs basically, plus, plus yeah, you know, so uh, it's much appreciated if you can have a look on that. Anyway, thanks for watching today. What are we going to do with the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family, more importantly, Let's all look after each other. And uh, until the next moments in time or a city city present even with this as I'm recording this, this the season obviously is due to start. When this goes out, it would be started again. So well, I don't know. I'm saying this. This is a problem when you record something uh, uh, three or four weeks ahead of time. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting, won't it? I'll see what's happening. But uh, anyway, if you join me again for something else very, very soon, a city past or a city present on the cities and vlogs, please uh, I look forward to seeing you then. This is Bernard saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching.